Apologize if I butcher your name.、Um, <laughs> yeah, it's it's not a very common name. It's okay. No, it's,、um, <laughs> it, it's Mikiko Ponchek. Yes. Well, it's kind of funny because Ponchek is is correct, but、uh, my family actually says Ponchek. So,、um, but that's because yes, it's kind of odd because it's a Polish name originally, but we we're not Polish. So it's just been generations of、uh, yeah being in Germany <laughs> that、mm. the pronunciation is kind of warped, I guess. So it's Pontic, yeah. All, right,、um, <laughs> All I, the Polish people are gonna cringe and go like, "That's wrong, that's wrong." Yeah. But <laughs> to get us started, first of all,、um, tell us a little bit about yourself. Um, well, um, I, I I'm a freelance comic artist and manga artist, I guess, and、uh, I live and work in Germany. And yeah, I don't know. I've been doing this for I don't oh nearly a decade, I think. Oh, wow. <laughs> and um, yeah, um, most people know me from my mini comics on DeviantArt, and、um, yeah, style wise, wise, I suppose I. I draw all sorts of things, from serious,、um, more Western-looking things, all the way to adorable little chibis and, you know, cats and animals and <laughs> silly things. So、yes. it's yeah, it's pretty varied, I think. <laughs>、um, how did you get your start as an artist? Well,、um, it's a long story, actually.、Um, how did I get started?、Um, I've always been kind of surrounded by art because、uh, my mother used to paint, and、um, my family in general was was always very supportive of just、uh, anything creative, you know. Just yeah, but especially art. I think there there've been a lot of artists in my family,、uh, even if not even if if none of them really did did it professionally or seriously, aside from my grandmother. <laughs>、um, yeah, she's. I mean, she's. Japanese, and she's she's been a, a calligraphy a teacher and a master, and she's you know she's been making her own kimono and painting and all sorts of things. So yeah,、um, it's just I don't know. It's just been in the family for a while, even though、um, as I said, nobody's done it professionally, and so it just seemed kind of natural. <laughs> And、uh, I've always been drawing, even as a little kid, and、um, growing up in school instead of doing homework. <laughs> and <laughs> but it's it's not necessarily a good thing, you know.、Mm. Uh, studying is very important. <laughs>、yes. But、um, yeah, at some point, I think there was just this transition. You know, it's like, what do I do when I grow up? And and then I read my first、uh, Shonen Jump comic and. And it was, it was that was it. <laughs> I just went, yeah, this this is what I want to do. And I think I was around twelve when I just decided this was what I was going to do. And、uh, yeah, not necessarily、um, something my parents、uh, liked to hear. <laughs> no, 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 because my my father was a banker,、mm. and well, most people know that art is not exactly, you know. Yeah, to it, most people, it's not the the bit best kind of career choice, is it? <laughs> moving along,、um, so would it be fair to say that your grandmother and mother were big influences on you growing up? Yes. So、um, me、uh, growing up abroad was one of the the reasons I got into manga. Is、uh, it's because it was kind of a connection for me culturally back to home,、mm -hmm. and so reading、uh, Japanese comics was just.、Um, Very very important to me because it was part of my identity,、um, and so I just it, it was just a way of expressing myself. I wasn't actually very popular when I was、uh, little and didn't have many friends, so I'd I'd prefer just reading loads of comics and just just you know、um, 
yeah, inventing stories and just dreaming up things instead. And and so yeah, it had it had a lot to do with my surrounding and being a little bit isolated from moving all the time. And uh, and obviously, my mother, as a Japanese, she did read some manga herself, and sometimes she let me read hers. And you know, we'd we'd read them together, things and watch anime together, and. Things like you know uh, Studio Ghibli's um, works and things that was just what I grew up with. So um, uh, my my manga influence didn't come when the anime wave hit Europe and America. It was way earlier. So okay, yeah, you've been published a few times, correct? Yes, yes, that's true. Yeah, that's right. So how, how exactly did you get into publishing? Well. Um, I always wanted to, well, as I said, <laughs> I decided with 12 years that I was going to be a, a manga artist. So I, I had been sort of looking into that a lot and, you know, researching and looking around. And um, after I finished, well, I, I graduated from German, I suppose it would be high school. Um, I didn't really know what to do and looked around in like universities and things. I even applied to art academies and got rejected. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but eventually I just decided, you know what, I can do this myself. I don't need the help of well, or whatever, you know. And I just um, send out like really my early, early crappy work <laughs> to, to indie publishers. Yeah. And one of them actually accepted it and we printed it. And, and then they invited me to go to cons. And uh, at the conventions, I, I just got a direct contact, you know, you just talk to people, you see what's going on in Germany at least. Mm -hmm. And um, and that way I got into contact with a lot of other publishers and what they, you know, what kind of things they pick up and, and what sort of things I could do within the scene, not just making comics, but also teaching, doing workshops, um, you know, going on stage, like doing talks and things. And I just... I just actively took part in all of that and um, one, uh, oh, I forgot which, I don't know, 2010 or something, I, I actually had a talk in the Leipzig Book Fair, which is one of Germany's biggest book, well, big, I think it's the biggest book fair, and um, I had my stage across Tokyo Pop, okay. so, so <laughs> the, the main stage was pretty much facing Tokyo Pop's booth. And um, my workshop was the first thing in the morning and there was nobody there. <laughs> there were like three people sitting in front of me. And, um, and so I just, I was very nervous, but I did my talk and I was talking about paneling and just did what I do well, you know, just the art bits and sketched just a few things and demonstrated what I could do. And then ended it with, well, you know, I've got my, my table over there and if anybody wants to you know, talk a bit more. Um, I'll be, I'll be there in five minutes, and and so on. And then when I went back, um, the CEO of Tokyo Pop was standing at my booth and waiting for me to come back. And then we had a little chat, and he he bought my crappy little first comic, and um, and yeah. And then uh, I think a week later, he emailed me and asked me if if. Uh, if I was interested in hearing his opinion on my book and and so we started talking and eventually they offered me a, a project to take part in and well that's, that was the beginning <laughs> now there's five books out very cool so, yeah tell us a little bit about some of the, your published works um for example I'm just purely going off your uh DeviantArt account um, mm -hmm. It seems like, correct me if I'm wrong, that Lost and Found was one of your first slash early projects. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's so tell right. Tell us a little bit about Lost and Found. Uh, <laughs> Lost and Found was my first um, manga that was like full length. Uh, I, f I forgot, like 200 pages or something, probably. Um, it was incredibly messy. I mean, it's, it's a story about, um, it's boys love. So it's um, it's kind of, you know... A romantic relationship mm -hmm. between two guys and things and uh, it, it kind of tackles the topic of bullying um, after coming out um, unintentionally especially and um, uh, well creatively obviously because it's it's very very old it's I think 2007 is is when it came out mm -hmm. first um, I, I you know I have a difficult time looking at it now <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> is it, but, is it um, the art style or the story? What is it about Lost um, the Bound? It's a little hard to... to I think all, like all of it. <laughs> <laughs> but story-wise, I, I didn't really know how other people made manga, so I just tried. It was an experiment, mm -hmm. so I didn't really know what works and what doesn't, how much time I have, how much time I'd need. Um, I didn't have a script, so I just sort of started drawing and you know, saw how it went and just went with it sort of thing. Uh, artistically, obviously, it's just old, so I can't really right. say much about that. It's just a bit outdated. But, um, but you know, it was still a very, very interesting experience, obviously. This is the thing that everybody should do is, uh, you know, bring out something that isn't an epic, um, you know, series first. You have to try with a small thing first to see how things go. And then you can do better next time. <laughs> <laughs> right. So, yeah, yeah. You have two projects. One that's sort of um, you're you're planning right now. I believe it's called Rue. Am I um, that right? Or is mm -hmm. that just, or is that kind of like a concept idea that you're just toying with, or is that something that you plan? Mm. To get well, at this point, it really is still just a, an idea. Right. Uh, it is one of the <clears throat> sort of universes I've already built a little bit. But um, I haven't really sat down to write a story yet. I have a vague, sort of vague outlining going on, but not really a, a, a solid story yet. Um, but yeah, it's um, it was originally a possible future project for Tokyo Pop, but uh, then my editor found out about Crash and Burn. And we decided to go with that one instead, which is why that, yeah, the Rue story is incomplete. But I do plan on eventually, you know, picking it back up and maybe, uh, you know, writing it a little bit okay. more. It, uh, you know, it's like some some ideas need to stew a bit, you know, <laughs> sit around and sort of ripen a bit <laughs> before you can really write them. So, yeah. yeah. That's actually a convenient segue into Crash and Burn. So that's your current project that you're working on, correct? Uh, yeah, it's uh, it's. I'm not working on it anymore because it's it's already uh, completed. Actually, okay. <laughs> yes, it's it's two volumes, and uh, the story has been told. And it's both published in Germany, and uh, uh, I have been asked whether or not I was going to draw a third volume, but that is something I'm not really sure of yet. And um, I do have material for a third one, but we'll see. I discovered you through your slice of life comics. Tell us a little bit about that, like kind of a big step for you. Um, it was uh, it was coincidence. Oh, okay. <laughs> so um, it started out with just a gift for um, my then boyfriend. So it was it was his birthday, and I didn't know what to draw, and I just decided to draw myself freaking out about what to draw, <laughs> and. Um, and that just got so popular that I just decided to do that every year. So for his birthday and for Christmas, yeah. I always always put on one story of things that actually happened, uh, more or less exactly how I drew them. I mean, obviously I, I exaggerate specific things for comedic value, but um, but it, essentially it's, it's all things that happened and it's very, very personal. Um, <laughs> so, um, yeah, and now it's just become a thing. I, I can't really not draw them because apparently that's what people know me for most. <laughs> so I didn't even know that it was being, uh, you know, shared on Reddit. And I know that Nine Gag steals it all the time as well uh, as a okay. lot of mean sides. So uh, <laughs> that explains all the watermarks on your yes, comics. Yes. <laughs> you've mentioned that you've been to several cons mm -hmm. promoting your work, doing um, workshops. Yes, um, yes. What are some of your more memorable experiences? Mm. Well, I think um, very recently with Crash and Burn, um, well, you know, like be being a published artist isn't as amazing as people think it is. You don't always automatically have, you know, queues of people waiting to meet you and things. So when Crash and Burn came out, um, I wasn't expecting too much because <laughs> I have had many other books out and it was like yeah you know it's nice and people yeah sometimes notice it <laughs> but when Crash and Burn came out um, it sold out pretty much within two months That's pretty good. Uh, so yeah and I did not expect that one bit so the con that I went to right after the release 
um, it sold out and the queue went um, all the way to the end of the hall and I just didn't know what was going on. That was, <laughs> that was very, um, yeah, that was kind of crazy because when I do signings, usually I have, you know, a handful of people waiting and then uh, sometimes there's nobody there and I just sit around and I wait for somebody to show up and, yeah. you know, ask for a signature. This time I actually had the entire hour full and I had to like finish up signing very quickly towards the end because you know they had to be sent away people had to send had had to be sent away because there was no time left and right. that was crazy and at the same con I actually met a, a girl who cosplayed uh, Kyle from Crash and Burn and that was amazing <laughs> <laughs> and the con after that somebody cosplayed Kimi and uh, and after that, somebody actually did a photo shoot of Tyler and Kyle and sent it to me. And that was that was also, I mean, just cosplay in general, I think, is a sign of just extreme dedication. So that, that really just made me all emotional, to be honest, <laughs> even now. When I think about it, that people, you know, put so much effort into it. Um, yeah, it's, it's one of the most satisfying things, I think. Um, as a creator to to see that and you know I, I, I always insisted on taking pictures together and put them up on my blogs and things so <laughs> so yeah so they do exist on my tumblr I think <laughs> okay yeah what's sort of your yeah what's your dream project that you could that you want to work on um I think um right now it always changes you know like depending on what happens um Right now, I think a dream project for me would be, um, <laughs> this is kind of embarrassing, but like a, a live, live action movie of Crash and Burn would be something I'd love. <laughs> if, okay. I could, if I could somehow have, uh, you know, uh, the ability to uh, take, like actually actively take part in something like that, that would be amazing, I think. Um, a lot of people have asked me whether or not I'd want it as an anime series or movie or OVA, but I can't really see it that way. I can only see it as a as an actual live action thing because I've tried to draw the characters as real people, and I think that would be yeah, that would be a dream. <laughs> I also really want to, if possible, at some point, have some of my stuff published in Japan. Um, I'm kind of curious how they how, how they view it simply because uh, it's such a strange mix. Um, because my pacing and storytelling is very much leaned on uh, the Japanese language and the, the the rhythm of the traditional manga. While my style has been, you know, people have been telling me that it looks somewhat more Western in in certain areas, like the the the, the element of realism that I put in. Um, when it comes to creating characters right. because in Japan it's all very hmm, um, archetypes archetypes yes exactly and yes. I, I try not to do that so I'm curious <laughs> <laughs> whether or not that would be uh, popular or people would hate it maybe I don't know <laughs> but um, that's a market I'd like to get into and um, funnily enough France as well because France has an amazing art scene, uh, especially in comics and uh, um, French, you know, comics. Yeah. Uh, and I think as an artist, gaining the respect of these people that I admire very much would be, yeah, pretty, yeah, yeah that would be nice. <laughs> um, okay. I've noticed that in your mini comics, most uh, mainly your mini comics and some of your Instagram photos that you have, <laughs> exactly how many cats do you have? Because it seems <laughs> two. like... Two. Just two? Okay. It, it seems yes. like every... every like, going through, again, <laughs> going through your mini comics, it seems like there's always a different cat. Um, <laughs> yeah, that's um, that's true. Um, that Well, I did have uh, different cats before because of the relationship mm -hmm. I was in. So um, they were my ex's cats, but they were obviously still, you know, we spend time together. So they were also kind of my cats at that time. Right. Um, now that things uh, haven't worked out between us, I've got my own two cats. So right now it's the black and the white one. Okay. The, 
Got you. <laughs> <laughs> Who owns the cat that appeared in your London trip, your holiday adventure? Oh, <laughs> well, that the fifth cat. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that was the cat of of the、uh, family I was staying at.、Okay. So. That was a Norwegian、uh, forest cat, and、uh, he was he was just、uh, regal. <laughs> <laughs> What、yep. are one or a couple of your guilty pleasures that you have?、Um, well, I, I do have one、um, that's rather silly, actually.、Um, I I really don't like much Japanese music, but there is a genre of Japanese music I quite enjoy. And it's、um, <laughs> it's called it's called enka, and it's it's generally in Japan most popular with very very old people. <laughs> so it's kind of like、um, it's kind of like old folk music、yeah. mixed with very cheesy ballads and things. And I I really like it for its、uh, its campy、uh, <laughs> quality, really, because it is very sorry, silly. I'm sorry. <laughs> Um, but Just, yes, I never know what I'm gonna get when I ask that question. What's my favorite question to ask? I'm sorry. It's always, it's, it's fine. <laughs> it's quite entertaining.、Mm-hmm. But yes, I've been laughed at by my mother, and、uh, so she's like, "Oh, how old are you?" Jeez. <laughs> And I'm like, I don't know. This is just great. I mean, just listen to this lady singing about crying into her sake cup because her lover left her and is out in the sea, and and it's just so dramatic and stupid. But I love it because it's so stupid,、right. you know.、Um, so occasionally I indulge in that and just turn it up and just sing along. Like the style of singing is very goofy as well. So. <laughs> So yeah, <clears throat> yeah, that's that's definitely. <laughs> <laughs> All right, very cool.、Um, what is some of the best advice that you've received? Yeah,、um, there's a couple actually.、Um, I I have like、um, a guy who's kind of like my mentor, and the thing is, he's not into comics or anything. He does traditional art. And one of the things he said that stuck with me,、um, well, it's not really advice, I guess. Well, he's he's given me advice as well, so I guess I'll just.、Uh, um, he said,、um, people are always interesting, because I was drawing people, and I I got worried that drawing people might get boring after a while, because I was doing it for a portfolio, and I was like, I'm trying to impress someone with a portfolio. And I'm like, but it's all just people I'm drawing. And he's like, don't worry, people are always interesting. And and the older I get, the more I I find that that's the truth. People, every single person has different experiences in life and has a story to tell, and、um, it never gets boring. So that's one. He also said that when you draw art, you have to draw things that are invisible as well. And I didn't understand what he meant by that. But、um, it it what he meant is that. A lot of things in a painting can point to things that you don't see. So,、um, like three-dimensional thinking, is is one of those things, right? You you draw a three-dimensional object, you don't really see that something is round. For example, a ball is round. You don't see the back of it, but you know it's round in the back and things. So, things like that, or things that are covered up, you know, faces that aren't quite shown or something. You still the, the mind completes the the stuff. That you don't see in 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 the head, right? Like puts the image together like a puzzle and things. So, doing art well is about creating this illusion of there being more to it. It's the same with stories, right?、Yeah. You give away a little bit, and people want to know the rest. That's because you're kind of hinting at something that they don't see yet. So, that was somewhat of a thing that's really stuck with me. That's very、so. advice.、Cool Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just sounds so mysterious, but it really did. It did shape me as an artist a lot. So yeah. Do you have any advice or a、uh, message that you'd like to share with aspiring artists? You know, those twelve-year-old、uh, Mikiko's out there in the world. Any advice <laughs> for them? Well,、um, one thing would be the internet is at your fingertips. Make use of it. <laughs> 
because a lot of things like I I grew up without internet I, I only got like my own computer when I was 18 or 19 or something so it was very late right um, but once I did I just researched everything and you know talked to everybody and asked questions and um, I still get people who who ask me very very basic questions that anybody can google <laughs> so uh, like Google is there for a reason. It's very, very good. Mm -hmm. Do use it. Um, doesn't mean you don't. You shouldn't ask me. I, I don't mind answering questions at all. But there is so much information on the internet that you can find that can help you, and you can pick and choose what suits you best. And nobody knows what suits you best than yourself. So, you know, people ask me like, where should I study art? And I'm like, I, I don't know. I've never studied art. I, I have no clue. I don't know. Where, <laughs> I don't know what country you're living in. I don't know any schools. So. Those are the things that you can really um, just find on your own and nobody's stopping you. So that's one thing I'd like to say. Um, other than that, hmm, yeah, I, I don't know. Just be careful and never give up, I guess. Like, be cautious because art is a difficult business. So don't underestimate how much work it is and how hard it can be. But if you're dedicated, don't give up. There's going to be very, very difficult times where they will pass as well. So, excellent, very cool. Yeah. <laughs> well, um, thank you very much, Mikiko, for uh, oh, thank you <laughs> for doing this interview. I, I deeply appreciate it, uh, especially for your time. Uh, you are clearly uh, a busy individual. Uh, so, <laughs> yeah, it was thank fun. You, thank you, thank you very much for taking thank the time. You too. Um, <laughs> just before. Before we close out, how can people support you? Uh, I know you're. I think I think you got an account on everything, but yes. <laughs> well, um, I suppose the best way to actually support me would be over uh, Patreon, where I'm at uh, uh, Patreon.com/slash Mikiko, and you can support me uh, with a small donation every month and get rewards. Um, and yeah, that would definitely help me out most. Other than that, just sharing my work respectfully with credit. Mm -hmm. And uh, you hear yes, that nine gag? exactly. Credit her work. <laughs> I would appreciate to be being asked beforehand, mm -hmm. but if credit is given, I really don't mind at all if people spread it. So uh, even comics, as long as somebody links me back, I'm always okay with it. And uh, yeah, so so that's that. Um, on DeviantArt, I'm, I'm zombiesmile.deviantart.com and you can find every single platform I'm on linked on my profile. <laughs> cool. Yep. Well, again, uh, Miguel, okay. thank you for your time and I yeah, wish you the you. best of luck. Thanks. <laughs>